Hello everyone. Welcome to Remote Sensing and GIS for Rural Development. This is week four, lecture five. In this week, we have been looking at the data types for GIS. And we have focused on vector data type in this week's lecture. Most of the data that we get from government resources and observation data is in the form of point, line, or polygon. And that data is easily converted into a vector database in GIS. So moving on, <clears throat> we have seen the panel of QGIS, and we also looked at some major tools that we can use for vector analysis. Some examples were given, as in buffer, width, and the use of these tools were also discussed. For those who have to get more introduction of QGIS tools. I will share today's lecture time in looking through the documentation of QGIS, especially for vectors. So these two links I have already given in the previous day's lectures. And I hope you had time to look at these links. These are the same links that we used to read about QGIS, look at the forums, log in and create questions, wait for answers, etc. Now we will look at specific documentation that we can use for vector analysis in QGIS. Once we click this and through some steps, we will arrive at this web page which talks about working with vector data. So let's check it out. I'm going to click this link. It will open a page. I will have to share the page. Yes. So in this page, what you see is the yeah. in this page is where we went and downloaded GIS, the first link. So you click on Discover QGIS. In the Discover, you can get say get started. Again, to remind, this is the most recent version, three point two eight but we had gone to the stable version. Stable version has been checked long enough on the system and so it is called stable. 3.28 will one day become a stable version when QGIS goes to 3.4, 3.5, etc. But for now, most users find 3.22 to be more stable, so they use that. You click on the get started, and then we have downloaded this, check our documentation, connect with the community. So this is where, as I mentioned, you will go and discuss with community on your spatial data issues, tool issues, et cetera, and then you'll get support. But we are going to go to the user guide. I'll open it in another tab and then the menu and tutorials. So in the first thing, the user guide, the left is the contents. What we are very sure about is the data source that we have discussed. 
how do you do the data source, creating the um, data and putting it in the browser panel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Creating new vector layers is what I would like to go through here. So here, there has been a tutorial given step by step and with a image of creating a point shape file with some data they have given. Okay, so you can see that they have used Airbus in Alaska as a tool, and then they go step, enter the name, enter the field, and then create a new shape file by using the plus symbol, uh, create a shape file uh, button. If you don't know this, you can click and it will also open um, the image to zoom in. And then you go to the uh, projections and uh, coordinate system, you put in what is needed, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. As I said, um, this is not a uh, QGIS or GIS specific course. It will be introducing that. So I'm going to go to the data sources that this software looks at. So there are two data sources working with raster data, working with uh, vector data. Okay. Uh, in the in the bottom, you can see the 14.3, 14.3.1. Uh, they discuss the raster data. Let's click the raster data. What is the difference between the raster um, and then um, how it is continuous data, what kind of uh, format it is uh, stored, etc. Whereas the vector data is, is point, uh, line, and uh, polygon. And they talk about the extensions that I have given. So this tutorial can also be a reading material for you. Uh, and they do look at the S3 shape format. So S3 is a proprietary software for mapping. Like QGIS, there is an S3. Um, it, is, it came before QGIS, and hence uh, it has more features, uh, tools, user community, et cetera. Uh, but it's very expensive for a lot of people, so that is why open source has been created. So we promote a lot of open source in IIT Bombay uh, through the FOSSI program, which is free open source software for science and education um, and engineering. So it is it is uh, very, very widely accepted across the globe, this program. Uh, and so I would like to also follow that and take QGIS in this uh, NPTEL lecture. So you could see some other uh, formats and how it is being stored, et cetera. As I said, those who would like to brush up on the basics, the materials are here. You could go ahead and uh, read through it. Okay, so uh, we will go to working with vector data. Okay, uh, so you will have multiple, multiple points to discuss. So the vector properties dialog, what it means. Um, uh, then it will go through each and every um point that you would like to discuss in using vector data let's say see single simple render if i click the single symbol render you could see that how you style your vector data in the database can be done for example sometimes the data may come in a particular style and format it won't look that appealing in a map so here's where if you right click on the data and then go to properties, you will get into this layer property data point, data um, visualization tool and um, dashboard. In the dashboard, you can see source, symbology, labels, masks, 3D view, diagrams, fields, attributes, et cetera, et cetera. The most key I would say is source where you find information about the data which is called the metadata. Whereas the other important aspect in this properties is the symbology. Please understand that maps you can do to analyze and get data out or analyze the data, that is fine. But at the end of the day, you're also creating visualization tool. So you're going to visualize the results, maps. So the maps have to be well observed by the viewer and stakeholder for which 
the styling is very important. In some software, it's called styling. Here, it's called symbology. And it gives you about, for example, here, the line is a simple line. It's not dash dash line or a star star line. It's a simple solid line. And the color of the line is given. Opacity is when you place it on the top of a map, is it blocking the data up below it? Because maps are in layers. So these kind of very, very important aspects are given. The thickness of the line, what unit is the thickness? If you would like to have a template of design, you have dash black, dash blue, dash green, uh, and effect emboss. These kind of things are there. These are saved styles that you can quickly use without changing color, opacity, width, unit, etc. Again, if you don't know all this, you can always go with the default setting. Um, some of the data here are default. So you can just click, click, and then say accept, apply, and then it will come up. The other thing uh, I would like you to notice, sometimes the dashboard visualized here on the page will not be the same as your software. This is because the software would have updated the bullets, the points on the left-hand side would have changed. However, most of it will be there. So don't worry that the system, the way you use it will change. It, that will not change. Only thing is there will be addition and uh, some uh, tools will be removed or some bullets on the left would be removed. So you could see how you could do cat uh, categorization, and then rendering it with names, labels, et cetera, et cetera. It's very extensive. Uh, it runs through multiple pages. Uh, I will not, uh, again, cover all this, uh, but uh, it'll be good for those who have uh, limited basics to look at this, OK? So then what you do is you can also come to the general tools um, where you have uh, layer panels, what does it mean? Like it gives you the styling doc, new group, filters the uh, uh, legends tree, um, and then uh, configuring map themes, show all layers, hide all layers, select layers, all these things. Because you will be layering your uh, data, uh, it is good to have only those data that are needed for your uh, map to be visualized. Uh, you can have it in your stack, uh, on the background, but make sure that you don't have to show all the data uh, up front. It is not uh, needed. Okay. So this is about your uh, general tools um, about uh, in QGIS, and more importantly, uh, your user guide gives you how to work with vectors, uh, symbols, and then all the symbols, uh, styling different symbols, drawing effects, label properties, etc. And then all the left-hand side that you saw, masks, uh, label, uh, join, attributes, everything are given here. So you do have uh, attributes uh, from properties where uh, you can collect data um, and then add it in the attribute section. So you can customize your data, you can auto-generate your data, all these kind of things can be done. Again, uh, we will be working mostly with data that is taken from government resources and then applied here as a tool. So we have already seen Bhuvan, uh, NASA data, etc. Uh, most of them are uh, raster data, but we can also look at how to collect uh, data from observation data and then add it as attributes here. Then we also have vector tiles which um, tiles are packets of geographic data packed together because as I said, when you send data or when you share data, sometimes it's better to share as a pack, as a database. Um, that can also be done here uh, where multiple data are added um, and then given as a vector tile. I'll go back to the vector data, working with the vector data, working with the attribute, Table. You have multiple uh, table columns and um, rows. Uh, the columns define the objects. 
uh, whereas rows are attributes, how many entries are there. And then you could do uh, some spatial joining of tables because in one table there will be location like city name, whereas the other table will not have it. But you know that the ordering is linked to the city. So you can merge the tables. Uh, this is uh, very important while working with um, vector data because sometimes government and non government data has the city name and the district name implied, which means they'll have a code. Uh, city one, city two, like a pin code. The pin code tells you where the location is. For example, you have four zero 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 seven six for IIT Bombay, uh, and uh, Powai is linked to that pin code. Uh, but if you don't want to label it as Powai, you can always label it as a number, uh, if if at all the government is collecting like that. So my point is, if you have a data with uh, shape files of district cities and uh, towns you can merge these two together by join tables or a join tables function these are kind of advanced but again uh, sometimes your data requires you to join and merge uh, the data so that is what we are discussing here so that is all about uh, this function working with vector data function Again, as I said, there are multiple ways you could um, label your data. There are multiple ways you can uh, access the data. And there are multiple ways you can store the data. So all this have been given here. Uh, please go through it. Uh, one one uh, tool that we will use more is the field calculator. Uh, it is actually used to create new fields. Um, or create new rows and columns based on an uh, existing column. For example, uh, you have uh, length divided by 1000. And so the function length, dollar length, is how you write it, the syntax. Uh, it returns the length of a line string. If you need the length of um, a border of a polygon, uh, use a dollar perimeter uh, instead. So. Here you could see that uh, dollar length has um, given the output. The syntax is how you write the code. Here there's a lot of codes. Uh, sometimes um, that is where proprietary software will have this as a tool. Uh, but here you will have to type it as a code. Uh, if you just type it here in the search box and show help, uh, it brings about a lot of lengths. And you know that you want to um, create the length of the, create a new uh, field uh, where the length of a particular shape file is stored. So if you can see here, it is create a new field. So in a table, you're creating a new field, a new column, and the column name is called length underscore kilometer, which means the output field is a decimal. It's a number with kilometers. So uh, maybe it was in meters, the length. So length gives you the, meter, uh, the length of a uh, line string in meters. Um, and so what you would do is you would divide it by 1000 to get the kilometer. So some simple uh, coding you will have to do um, and uh, you have to tell which column, which uh, field you're going to take and then map it. So uh, you can also do an, uh, create a new field or update an existing field. If you update, the data will be corrupted or the data would be updated. Uh, so as I always said, it's always easier to have a create new field and then preserve the old field so that you don't, um, uh, if you do a mistake in these kind of codings and stuff, you don't lose the initial information. So field calculator is where you would go and delete a field, edit a field, uh, convert a field, or even create new fields as uh, given here. Multiple uh, examples given, editing multiples field, how you would edit, use a toggle sign, the pencil sign, if you click and then say edit, and then it will start editing. So all these, as I said, uh, you could go through these tutorials. Um, it has been given in the videos uh, tutorial also, uh, but uh, for those who like to go through the exercise, you can go through this. Uh, it is like a cookbook recipe, we say, where we click, 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 and then each picture each image that comes is also given in the website so you can compare and then uh, work through these uh, homeworks they're given some uh, example data and gone through uh, these exercises for you okay so i will uh, close this and then the manual um, is um, about 
using uh, QGIS tools, uh, the multiple modules, uh, I would like you to concentrate on uh, the creating vector data. Okay, so here you would say first lesson is to create a new vector data set, uh, feature topology, forms, actions. Uh, you can you can go through the create a new vector data set, and then um, it will tell you the goal is to create a new vector set. Uh, it is not as difficult. It's green in color, so follow along. Uh, which means it just says open very very simple basic steps they will give you open QGIS create a new blank uh, project navigate to create menu and then create the field so each image is given to show you what we're going to do so this is a create a new uh, shape file and the shape file type is a polygon so you have three point line and polygon they have taken the polygon so then you also have, um, once you create it, you'll have to give a projection and a coordinate system uh, where the reference coordinate system is given as WGS84. Again, if you don't know for your location what to give, the forum helps you. You can go and say, for example, what is the CRS for uh, Indian region, and then you'll get it. So uh, then you add field. So once you create the polygon shapefile new database for vector, you will have to have columns where uh, new fields or objects are going to be put. Uh, for example, you have um, a shape file of states. Then one of the uh, field will be name, right? You want to give the district name or the state name, and then the area, the population, male, female. So all these are fields, ob objects. And within the field, you have data. The rows would become the attributes. So it says, look at this um, uh, new field. Uh, what type of field? Is it a string? Is it a number? Uh, you'll have to, since it's a name, it's a text data. How much length of the data you want to give, et cetera. So all these are kind of self-explanatory. Uh, you would give uh, within the field, there are two in this polygon, there are two. One is name, and then the other is ID. Name, for example, state Tamil Nadu, and the ID is number one. Uh, zero one would be the ID uh, and it is 10 in number. So maybe the zip code can also, or the pin code can also be kept here um, for, for a unique identity identifier. Okay, so then you go to uh, raster is another one, but um, we'll come to this when we discuss the raster. So we will keep this part alone for today. So moving on, uh, they also have uh, training materials in English, uh, Brazilian, French, German, and Czech. Uh, there are a lot of uh, tutorials that they say are available. Uh, so for example, it says official uh, training materials can be found here. If you click, it opens on the QGIS uh, training uh, modules, classifying vector data, creating vector data. We just went through this tutorial, right? Um, uh, and then there is a workshop um, written in English, translated in over 15 languages, uh, done by uh, Ujwal Gandhi, uh, who is like, as I said, a volunteer who gives a lot of time on these. So if you click this, uh, you can also get into some of the tutorials, all open source free based on QGIS. So you have different uh, versions, you have basic operations, you have the intermediate, uh, advanced and, uh, and then water specific, etc. And then there is also a tutorial material developed as part of the workshop on ecology and evolutionary biology program at Texas A&M University. So you can click here and then go in. Um, most of them are not videos. Uh, so you, however, it's still okay to go through and do like cookbook recipe, as I said, step one, they'll ask you to do and then an image is there. So you will have it. It's written in simple English. Uh, it's not difficult, so uh, please go through it. Uh, there's a fundamentals of GIS, intermediate of GIS with QGIS and post GIS, and then a lot of coding, if you would like to do the advanced part, can be done here. So there's introduction, advanced, and customized QGIS with, with plugins and Python. Um, you could uh, definitely use these. So these are the training materials. Um, and the training materials that we find uh, online um, are also usable. For example, every entity, private or government uh, agencies do uh, spend a lot of time 
on these kind of um, tutorials to support students, researchers, and anyone who would like to use uh, QGIS. So coming uh, back, um, I would like to uh, again stress the fact about QGIS. But before that, I would like you to look at how do you search for um, vector data. So you have to type shapefile uh, download for India, just say for searching. So in QGIS, you can see that a lot of um, download shapefiles, boundaries, Diva GIS, etc. is there. Uh, I will explain Diva GIS here. So how you have to search for if you want is just Diva GIS. Um, it opens like this. Um, it's a very um, useful data uh, archive uh, for point data and some raster data. Uh, once you click Diva GIS or download data by country, uh, you will go through the uh, download program to look at what is this uh, Diva GIS about, how is it free, um, and then documentation, English and different language. Um, and then how it has become free uh, spatial data. And out of this, what are the data that you can collect? Sometimes it also brings data from multiple resources. For example, here you have uh, Eden Project, um, a Landsat data from different uh, resources. Uh, the elevation data is also here. So I would like to conclude by just going through this exercise of how do you get country level data? So click Diva GIS. Again, the boundaries may be different. Uh, they keep updating, they keep changing these boundaries. So please be very cautious about using it. Uh, use mostly the Indian government websites. Uh, some data, if it is not available, yes, you can use these kind of resources, but be very careful on the Northern boundaries and um, other boundaries of India, because sometimes they do not have accurate information which is the full coverage uh, but they'll give you what is the data about for example i've clicked india uh, and they tell what are the data that they have and what is the source so source is this one so you have administrative boundaries this is where i'm i'm talking about the boundaries may may not be correct um, there is no vouching of these uh, who uh, or the government agency telling that this is the correct data to use like this there will be multiple data online please do not use them unless and otherwise it has been verified and the government of India approves it. Here, this has not been approved as the boundaries. Uh, so be careful in using it. Maybe if you go to the source and if that is approved, you can use it. Uh, but for um, the southern part, most of these data are accurate, um, especially the uh, administrative boundaries uh, inland water, which is the rivers, canals, road network, railroads. Uh, elevation data is same. You don't have boundaries. It's a raster. It's a continuous data. So you can take it. The land use, land cover is there. Population from the census and then put it in a GIS format. Uh, world climb climate uh, data, world climate or world climb data is pretty good and well used by researchers around the world. It gives you rainfall, uh, wind speed, temperature, humidity. Most of the parameters for uh, climate are given here. Um, and uh, your gazette is also the name of the coordinates, um, which, which gives you some administrative data also. Okay, the formats, what type of formats, what is the resolution? All these can be obtained from here, the format and resolution. Uh, the resolution is mostly given as spatial resolution. It is not talking about temporal. Uh, for example, land use land cover is for a particular year 2000. It is not every year or every five years once. Um, and, uh, and the units is 30 seconds. You can always convert the unit to uh, metrics by using some formulas. Uh, okay, so once you give okay, it will ask you um, to download the data as a zip folder. You can download it and apply it in GIS. But again, be careful on understanding the data is it been approved by government of India. So one more um, link that I would like to share is data.gov.in. So this is a um, good uh, data set that um, we can use. Okay, open data platform. Uh, here also you can get a good amount of shape files 
uh, and uh, point data. The point data can go into, you can make a shape file, you can make a vector shape file as discussed in the tutorials um, earlier. So for example, you can go here and, and click. Uh, I put Tamil Nadu water, uh, you can click, uh, and then it'll, it'll tag whatever data it has. So for example, surface water quality uh, from Puducherry, Andhra Pradesh, uh, water bodies, number of water bodies, et cetera. Uh, you can create it's all in a in a data set uh, module like a table and then you know that table is there you know it's Tamil Nadu you can link it with a GIS database okay uh, sometimes uh, shape files are given as formats um, so you can click shape files of rivers so you can see here the government of India this is a government of India data so you can use it uh, it has been approved and put as a data in the data.gov uh, you can download as a zip through the URL, uh, how many downloads, etc. So shape files or rivers, airports, um, and then rainfall points, where exactly you can get rainfall points. If you can click here, more more information about the data comes up. Um, um, and then you can see that uh, published date, uh, updated, uh, what it contains, the data about the data, uh, gridded rainfall points of the entire country. So all these are uh, pretty uh, well established. And it is um, also having a lot of other data. For example, here you have year-wise year funds allocated under Jal Jeevan Mission. So this is a very rural uh, development um, scheme. Uh, we have discussed this in the first two weeks of the lecture. Uh, so basically, this gives you data about how much funds are allocated. Now, for rural development, uh, we need this information because we're going to put it in a map and show that this is the, how much funds have come but how is the benefit? So funds versus benefit ratio, you can analyze and work it through. Uh, it's shared in Twitter, but the links are come, take you back here. For example, I'm going to click this. Uh, it will come back. Basically, it's a Twitter handle there, but then it goes and comes back to the data.gov.in uh, where the data is being stored. Okay. Uh, some other, uh, so you can see community data.gov.in um, and then you'll have all the data uh, in a um, um, visualized Excel sheet or uh, some some format. Okay, so you do have a uh, running database. So you can also take these data and then put it in your computer uh, new shape file. Uh, for example, if this is um, a year fund allocated central share for the entire country, you can see that around um, 390.31 uh, crores. Uh, has risen to 35, uh, 3590 crores in 2020-2023. So in this, in this, um, uh, you can also uh, type it as a attribute value in your um, database. So a lot of lot of data can be taken. Uh, one goal of this is also to uh, give students uh, a link to where uh, you can find data. So there's a visualization tool you can go through which has been uh, updated uh, on 12th July 2022. Um, and then you can download the data as a table. Uh, so you can see here the table is there, as I said, you can convert the table back into shapefile and put it across India. So these are the ways you could find data. Uh, I've covered two data sets, one is Diva GIS. A lot of people use it. Uh, uh, however, uh, the boundaries could be wrong and there is no guarantee if the boundaries are working, but data.gov.in has uh, most of the data uh, scrutinized by the government of India. So it is actually a trustable data source. Uh, sometimes there is a uh, less uh, speed in updating and that is why people use open source data like Diva GIS and other sources. But slowly this uh, is also picking up because uh, spatial data and mapping has been key um, uh, indicators for nation's development, which uh, has been um, covered in programs like Gati Shakti and mapping of India, water bodies, etc. So uh, with this, uh, I would like to get back to um, what we have been discussing on the links. Uh, we have worked through these tools. Um, as I said, um, QGIS has been uh, in, in um, uh, use from 2002, 20 years at least. Um, public license works on all software opening, open, uh, open source softwares and operating systems. Um, and multiple agencies are being using it, the US, Swiss, New Zealand, et cetera. 
the process is cyclic um, in terms of uh, using and defining the problem. Uh, but um, please understand that always there is a possibility of uh, from the decision coming back into redefining the problem, uh, creating more data sets, and then updating the data sets. With this, I would like to conclude uh, week four's lecture. Uh, there will be a lot of discussions on agriculture and rural development, um, which is uh, put up by the Niti Aayog's vision of New India. Um, and uh, there's a lot of mapping and data that can be used, remote sensing and GIS. I will see you in week five lecture. Thank you.